You are listening to Be Simply. This is Suzanne Toro, a.k.a. She. You can anticipate being inspired, discovering some inner and outer wisdom and inspiration. Without further ado, let's dive into Be Simply. Welcome, this is Suzanne Toro, and I want to thank you for joining us today. We are going to dive into a segment of Empower You, brought to you by Be Simply Radio and Media. And this segment, we're going to really explore the Wetico, and I will be drawing some parallels to words that are hot topics here on planet Earth right now. And to define the Wetico, the Wetico, if you're not familiar, is described as, quote unquote, the evil that plagues one's soul and mind. And when we give way to that darkness, it impacts our mental body, our emotional body, our spiritual body, and our physical body. And also it impacts the relationships we have with our communities. And I've mentioned in other segments that in a true uh, tribal situation, uh, we wouldn't let things get so out of control, meaning that when well-being entered a community, or not well-being, when disharmony entered a, a community, they take that as a sign that there is something there that is harming their people, and then it needs to be brought into balance. And so in tribal situations, they're very cognizant of the unseen realm that uh, interacts with nature and the world around them. And so they have uh, what we would describe as a dualistic perspective because of their ability to go from the physical world to the unseen world back to the physical world. And so they have no problem calling out uh, spirits and energies of darkness and understand their very tangible impact on their family, their loved ones, and the world around them. And even in my work with different elders on this planet, uh, we've had discussions about this. And I've seen elders get compromised by this wetico. Uh, and f- how I define it and how I've been observing it and trying to understand it pretty much for most of my adult, late teen to adult life, is that it has always felt uh, like a third party in the room, an energy that is causing chaos for yourself if you're in the seat where you're getting um, harmed by this and for the person that's been taken over by it. Now in uh, psychotherapy, they will give this wetico a term called narcissism. And I'm sure I could find a few to debate me that they would say, oh, there's no spirits. Uh, No spirits can cause an issue for you, yet I'll be happy to have that debate with them and show them in a clinical situation. And so what happens, and this is accounted for uh, in Chinese medicine, uh, they have 13 ghost points that are actually sealed off in final last rites so that no extra hitchhikers go with your soul uh, when it's your time to exit. So these things are accounted for, even in uh, Christianity and Judaism, Buddhism, a lot of isms, (laughs) these things are accounted for that there are some unexplainable things that happen that can compromise a human being, an animal, all kinds of aspects of the world we live in. So for those that this may be like pushing your envelope a little bit, I just asked you to sit back, listen to what I have to share, and just let it wash over you. You don't need to resist anything if it's like, oh, I don't want to hear about this unseen stuff. It'll be super beneficial for you if you're willing to listen and it might change your life and you might start seeing things a little differently. 
So when we look at the Wetico, this darkness that plagues humanity, what it does is it comes in, just the essence of it comes in and welcomes humans to vibrate at a place that is not um, healthy. And then this creates all those things that we grasp for and we, you know, have this dance with from addictions to laziness to, uh, gosh, what is it? The <laughs> overindulgence. It may not be an addiction, but it could be an overindulgence. All the seven deadly sins. It brings us into a vibrational state that doesn't allow us to be our highest and best being. And that's the point of entry. And then from there, uh, one can get more and more uh, codependent with this unseen force. And then that force starts to manifest in their life in a way that gives them power. But the power is coming from a, a dark place versus a light place. And this can be confusing, and this is why if we look even at, like, quote-unquote witchcraft, white magic and black magic are the exact same thing. It's just the intention in which they're used, and uh, I would debate, you know, this too, because, again, when we're living in polarity and we see something as bad or good, then we can put ourselves in a precarious position if someone decides to start casting spells and they're effective at it. Uh, They could create karma in a way that they don't want for future. And so imagine that all of a sudden you're uh, living with someone or you have a friend and there's something about them, you know. There's something about them that brings on certain energies. Now, for all of you listening, you might be able to see someone uh, that looks dark, meaning that they look like they're suffering, they're in a dark place, those signs could be there. But I'm talking about the people in and around your life that there's a magnetism to them, but it doesn't feel like a pure high vibration magnetism it's it's there's some underbelly you know of dante's inferno there so there's a magnetism but you're like hmm what's here and it's very alluring and very seductive so this is where that wetico is and then in our society why so many people are talking about it i feel is because people are getting aware they're like hmm this energy I don't want because they're starting to have more awareness that they want to uh, push their consciousness. They want to transform their consciousness. They want to really uh, see how far they can go from a spiritual space into the physical world simultaneously. So then what happens is that this dark force it starts to lose its power because it relies on people to be at this lower vibration or in need or grasping or wanting. And so uh, this is an interesting crossroads we're at. And then we have a choice here to get back into well-being. Yet it'll take everyone to be radically honest with themselves to see where this has touched oneself and where you can be more responsible with how you show up in the world around you. And so when working with this energy, it will uh, really come off as looking really nice. (laughs) And that's the narcissistic aspect where, again, there's a spectrum and we're not going to go into all the details, but it really does allure you. And I'm not saying every, yeah, it doesn't matter. And I've mentioned this before in broadcast. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't mean like a cover model is the narcissist. It means that the energy allure is alluring and it draws you in. So that can be in all shapes and forms of people on planet earth. And then what happens is that darkness, the Wetico, 
starts feeding that person information and energy from the unseen world. And that positions that person that has been taken over on a certain level to uh, start looking for the people to feed off. And so people that have been in relationships, they oftentimes will feel like there is a third person in the room. Sometimes they might be like, is it the ex-partner? Is it the energy of their parents, like mother? You know, there we're electromagnetic beings, so there's always energies feeding in. And that's why it's important for us to really examine this, you know, to look at it and start to take responsibility. Because if enough people start seeing you know, this energy in the room and cut off its supply chain, guess what? It's it's going to have to go someplace else. And then eventually it will vaporize. It'll transform into something else if enough of humanity is diligent with it. Now, the precarious part, and this is where in, you know, mental health communities, many Uh, studies have been done on this, many papers written, is they will say that uh, if we get into, you know, diagnosed narcissism, that it's untreatable. And this is where I would say I could uh, debate well as to why we would think that is because of this force of energy that is feeding them. It kind of keeps them uh, in the back seat, the the original soul to that body it keeps them in the back seat, and this other energy is driving. And so you might say, well, what is it? Is the energy, you know, is it an entity? Is it possession? Uh, what is it? And I would say there can be several things. I've witnessed several things. Sometimes someone is possessed, and that can be removed. And then other times, that energy that I'm talking about, the wetico is feeding them. It's kind of like, are you listening to the devil or the angel, you know, which on which shoulder? And the more you feed that quote unquote metaphorical devil energy, the more force and power it has over you and your life. And then it's pretty uh, interesting thing to witness someone go deeper and deeper into that and they might fight it. Ultimately, uh, the individual can exercise that if they have a will towards it. But what's happened right now in our society is so many people have gotten comfortable with the narcissist, being in relationship with the narcissist, becoming the narcissist. And again, uh, pathologically being a narcissist in the spectrum of narcissism, uh, MPD, narcissistic personality disorder and narcissism are going to be two separate things, but they're all being fed by the wetico, the the darkness. And so what I'm shining a light on in this moment, and we'll go deeper into it in future segments, because I I would like you to like observe this around you in your day-to-day life, and then we'll dive deeper into it in future segments, is that this darkness can bring you down, and then you're susceptible to things that make you even more susceptible. So this could look like uh, overindulging in alcohol, overindulging in recreational drugs. This could uh, look like addiction. This could look like overconsumption in sexual energy or uh, really uh, participating in the deviant aspects of sexual energy on this planet that exists right now uh, to commit crimes, to... Uh, be lazy, all these different things start to get fed by this darkness. And so if you take some time to start looking out in your world and seeing where are you feeding this energy, where are you allowing it in your life? And again, it's very alluring and sometimes it can be very, uh, I don't know, very sly so you don't realize it until you're like right next to it and you're like oh wow here it is and 
that is where you start to recognize it and then you decide how you want to engage with it or if you want to engage with it at all. Uh, narcissistic personality disorder, I would say that that energy is really taken root in their soul being and that's a very dangerous proposition to be in someone's life that has been uh, taken over by that energy. Now, if someone is narcissistic, and this is something that would happen, you know, this typically happens, and this is why uh, teenagers, you know, they have this, their how they engage with who they are. They become, uh, you know, f wanting to fit in, but don't know how to fit in. And so there's just this look at me mentality to try to fit in and blend uh, make sure that they toe the line and and it's not easy for all teenagers and then some of that hedonistic behavior goes into the 20s and then one would be rooted in their life's path in their 20s and then really uh, move forward in that and if we were in a tribal situation there would never ever be a hedonistic period period of their life because you would spend the time learning the traditions, the tasks, everything needed to create a well society. And so our society has gotten lazy in that we uh, kind of allow this behavior in a way that, oh, okay, uh, you know, go ahead and explore all those aspects of yourself. But we're, we're really missing out on this period of time where we would teach, train, educate, and not from like a higher education standpoint or a parochial education standpoint, but we would be really teaching them things that are interdependent with our natural ecosystem. So agriculture, farming, uh, things to make clothing, uh, weaving, all these different things, arts, music. We would be welcoming our communities to learn how to provide for themselves and how to carry the tradition because as the young ones rise up into their adulthood, they need to participate and contribute. So what's happened is this little devilish energy has come in and poisoned our minds, distracted us. And so then the energy has been about grasping, wanting more, and then that just feeds that devilish energy, that darkness. And from there... We've set up our current children, uh, the ones that are young now and even the ones that are in their 20s, uh, to be in a place where they really have to engage with the, this devilish energy, basically by creating persona, because we have this thing called the World Wide Web. People don't do that anymore. It always makes me chuckle. WWW. You can tell someone's age when they do that because they haven't realized we don't have to put WWW. But that's that's really how it started. World Wide Web. And so we've created this web throughout the planet, all around the planet, and in our mind. And those elements that we have started to direct our attention towards have degraded our society. And so the, the best way to handle a huge societal issue is to start from within. It's not to control it from the outside. It has to transform from the inside out. And so this, this topic of the Wetico, the darkness, the energy from the unseen that manipulates aspects of your being and your relationships and the way you look at the world around you has come to a point where there's enough people talking about it, enough people noticing it, that it's ready to transform or leave. So the first step, and that's why we'll go into this in segments, and if you have questions, feel free to email me or message me. 
uh, the email's s at suzannetoro.com, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E-T-O-R-O.com. The link is below. And the first step will be to observe, to observe your role in this very dangerous situation. And the reason it is dangerous is this energy has the power to destroy you and anyone that it comes in contact with. And, you know, a human life is so precious. So if you recognize aspects of this in and around you, you can start to create a shift. And again, for those that are completely taken over and have no empathy, they are selfish, meaning they're self-absorbed and grandiose to the world around them. The only way to sh help shift that for them is to cut off supply chains, similar to what the world <laughs> powers are doing to uh, or attempting to do through the port system. They're cutting off supply chain to create this inflation that you're feeling. There's plenty of stuff to go around, just all floating out at sea. And so, but we can do the same thing with the narcissist that, you know, our powers that I'm going to call the powers that we're uh, are, are attempting to do. They're trying to cut off supply chains. But what will happen and is going to happen and has happened before is people will remember how to produce things locally and will stop so much ocean traffic and everyone can share amongst continents. We don't have to uh, import and export so much. It's going to make travel a lot more yummy in the future. Get back to those old days where everything looks different when you go to different places and you celebrate their cultures. So with that metaphor, as I took us on a little side journey on our importing and exporting, is that if we cut off the supply chain to those that have been completely taken over by this darkness, poisoned, then what will happen is it can start clearing. And then I'll, I'm going to circle to what you can do for yourself too. But understand that the indigenous way is that when one is ill, you go sit, you go be, and you fast. And that process helps bring you into well-being. So the clear medicine will be to cut off the narcissistic quote-unquote supply, as it's called in uh, the mental health communities. And that's why you'll hear uh, the psychotherapist community saying no contact. Because it is, it is the, the person can't help themselves that has given way to the darkness. So the no contact helps you while you get your mind straight, especially if you are, have gotten deep into a dance with a narcissistic being, whether they're NPD or on the spectrum of expressing narcissism. So point one is you can cut off contact that will start to reduce supply chains. Point number two is stop celebrating these people for being something special. That's the ego. So if you were involved with a narcissistic person or someone that's NPD, I mean, they've been officially diagnosed. You can't diagnose them. Uh, if you've been involved with them, they would need to have an outside professional do that. But if everyone that's crossed that person's path and creates distance from them, that starts to reduce that food that they've been receiving. So you have those two things, no contact and reduce the food. Now, some of you are going to have to work with people that are um, in this position. And again, as I'll tell my uh, clients and students, if you put yourself in the center, center and have a labyrinth out from you, uh, just visualize them fully outside of, your sphere, and then you'll interact with them as needed. But you don't let them into your inner circles. 
because that's going to be very dangerous. Now, of course, these people are in uh, people's family units, all of that. But you get to decide how you engage with family, friends, and work coworkers. And so you can set the setting to be successful for you. Now, when we look at ourself, because as I mentioned, back in the day, we weren't given such a luxury to go into this uh, eye-centric self-identification identification of your being and kind of create any personality you want for yourself or quote unquote brand for yourself, you were a contributor to the cycle of life and the cycle of the earth and your community. And yes, everyone had different roles. Um, Some were very uniform in things like basic things, food, water, shelter, getting those things done. And then, yeah, there are high priests and shamans and uh, music makers and weavers, you know, so it wasn't just you had to tend to the basics, but then you had other roles too. And if you go to some place like Guatemala, beautiful textile, just gorgeous, bright, vibrant colors and really sweet, sweet, sweet heart energy. Like, I don't know, it's so sweet. It's like the beautiful, pure heart energy. There's no uh, infiltration of exploiting that energy. And so when you go there, everyone's in harmony with nature and nature is expressing the patterns of the weavings through and that you'll, they're very similar because everyone's in harmony with what's being fed through. Just like if you go to other parts of the world, there's different types of textiles that express the part of that culture, the harmonics of the earth and so forth. And so there's no, um, there's a unity and then there's a slight self-expression, but it's not so eye-centric like we have here in Western industrial societies and on social media. Now the social media has somewhat creating a whole other phenomena of eccentricness and from a global position, meaning that people can pick up and adopt things uh, in a different way than has ever been done before, kind of forgetting their roots where they are. So how this relates back to that unseen is that if you're nurturing yourself by one, taking accountability, like how am I relating to these people? Where do I need to cut off some of the supply chains to some of these people? Uh, meaning the energy I've been feeding them because they come and they'll, you know, and, and you'll participate. The person participates because it feels good at first. Like you feel appreciated and wanted, but then they want to kind of keep you around like a pet. And then when they're done with you, they're done with you. And so you decide, you start to flip the tables and you decide what the engagement is. And then from there, I really welcome you to take responsibility where maybe uh, you can soften your gaze. You can really think about how to be of service to the world around you versus uh, being so me, me, me. And there's always room for service, even if your ways and means aren't supporting that in this moment. There's always a way to be helpful to another human being. And that might be uh, by giving them a hug, bringing them a meal, all these different things. Uh, So your steps for this week, and next week I'll put another segment to this, is to start to observe your relationship with someone that's eye-centric or people that are eye-centric, maybe exhibit a spectrum of narcissism. And then ones that have uh, been taken over, they would fall in that NPD. Now, it's really important. You're not here to psychoanalyze anyone, but you will know if you've been in this dance even if it wasn't clinically 
called out because it'll have left you, the individual, as uh, feeling disoriented, confused, uh, in a battle with your ego and your heart. And uh, sometimes the person will feel ashamed. And so you'll know, oh, I was touched by that. And you might still be in your healing process, transforming process, regrounding. So it'll be interesting for you to really call that out, be truthful, and then make peace that it's done. If you're out of it, if you're not, need help, uh, reach out. We'll get you connected to all the pieces that will help you through the process. And then... Uh, We're going to go a little bit deeper into next time, but I just want you to one, own if you have been in it, if an honor or where you're at with it, to observe and then observe within self. Where do you uh, participate in the I centric? So, and it's just real simple. Where are you self ish versus selfless? Because the human, just like the ants, I'll use this analogy a lot, are designed to be of service to one another and the ecosystem around service. Now in the I centric, it's what can you do for me? What can I do for you kind of behavior? And there's a lot of grasping uh, at things. And when we live in harmony with nature, there's an understanding of balance of one, what we are to receive, what we take in, and what we give out and life is much simpler and there's contentness there. Uh, so it gets confusing, especially in the spiritual world. Uh, people can really push people to like, uh, go big or go home kind of thing. Uh, and so that's where I want you to check in. Like, where am I, you know, in my expression on planet earth and what, uh, is my relationship to uh, this eye-centric behavior. And then the one thing I also want to note out there is if you're someone that loves to give and oftentimes might feel slighted because you give so much and you're not getting back, you're perfect prey for the narcissist, but also you might be uh, narcissistic in a way where it's like the martyrdom, that you're always doing something amazing for the world but uh, the, the, the authenticity isn't there behind it. And, you know, still, it's still a good act if you're doing for other people. But once we bring that uh, authenticity behind it, <clears throat> it deepens. And that's why we have a lot of nonprofits on this planet that are, they sound good. But if you do a little investigating, you'll realize that they're more a veil of manipulation. And that'll be the last part that I close on today is that manipulation is the energy that reels you in uh, with the narcissist, with the wetico. It's this energy of seduction, allure. Uh, you don't understand, but you're wanting it and you can't quite put your finger on it. And then when it arrives, it starts to twist you around. So one more repeat of what I'm asking you, if inspired to do, is get really honest with yourself where you're grasping, you want things, people, uh, you're more selfish in the sense that you're eye-centric. Yes, it's important to take care of mind, body, heart, and soul. That's expected in my book. It's not considered being selfish when you take care of yourself. It's expected to take care of yourself. And not everyone is able to do that. So be easy with yourself if you can't. And then I want you to get really honest with the world that you are living in and have created where the selfless people are and the selfish people. We're just going to make it two categories. And then from there, I want you to uh, be radically honest with yourself if you have been impacted by a potential 
true clinically diagnosable NPD. Once you have that, just write it down, observe it, we'll come back around to it. Um, and then when you're in that process, you can decide where you're ready to create some distance and reduce the supply chain that you've been providing to uh, the narcissists in your life and the NPD in your life. And I don't mean to giggle, but it's, it's like, oh my gosh, what did we do? We created such a mess. Uh, but we can get out of this. I have complete faith in each and every one of us that we can do this. And ultimately what will potentially happen with those beings that are completely taken over by this energy, once that fog lifts, that they can start to heal too, officially heal. I, I get, um, I don't know, I get motivated when someone says that you can't heal something because everything's can regenerate. So I want to see all our brothers and sisters come into well-being and health, mind, body, heart, and soul. So and the final thing that you can do uh, is take some time for silence. I'll be doing a, a broadcast tomorrow, a Dharma talk with a meditation and sound. Please feel free to check that out. Uh, but that silence and prayer can really help you get back into your own energy, into a place of selflessness, service, and objectivity so that you can start seeing what really is around you and remember who you are. So until next time, this is Suzanne Toro signing out with a full heart. Once again, I want to thank you for listening to this segment, Empower You, brought to you by Be Simply Radio and Media. That was a song produced and created by Kadri Scott called Eat Your Greens. And until next time, 
Have a beautiful day. Remember, you got this.